Das Drunk. Drunk. Metroid is just another title in a long string of pieces of 1980s media, which was designed in part to mislead consumers. Think I'm exaggerating? What about The Legend of Zelda? Zelda was in that game for all of four seconds at the very end of it. And then there's the never-ending story. That lasted all of 91 minutes. Hardly what I'd call never-ending. Not to mention Chariots of Fire. That's maybe the most misleading of them all. No chariots, no fire. Just a bunch of British kids running around with nothing better to do. As for Metroid, Take a look at this box art. Not a single Metroid on here. In fact, in this entire game, there's only about eight of the creatures, and they only show up in the very last part. Spoiler alert, by the way, for a game that came out in America in 1987. But if you put aside the misleading title, you're left with a game that holds up to some pretty heavy libertarian ideals. You know, aside from the fact that you're fighting a bunch of alien creatures that couldn't actually exist because libertarians must remain completely skeptical to all things paranormal, lest they not be a libertarian, just ask Ben Gillette. Despite what you may think at first glance, you do not play as Metroid, but instead a bounty hunter named Samus Aran. And what a more perfect libertarian job to have than that of a bounty hunter. You get to set your own pay for a job that you're contracted to do, and you don't have to worry about pesky labor unions getting in your way. And depending on just how heavily armed a bounty hunter you are, they may not even want to get in your way. Speaking of heavily armed, there's a term that fits Samus to a T that given one of her arms is actually a weapon. Well, one of the arms of her powered armor that she's wearing, at least. Samus is sent down to the caverns of a planet named Zebus in order to hunt down the space pirates who have captured a species of aliens known as Metroids so that they can breed them as a biological weapon. Why are these Metroids dangerous enough to where the military has to rely on a privately contracted bounty hunter? Because apparently these Metroids have the ability to drain the life out of something faster than a big government public works program can drain taxpayer money. Samus is initially equipped with that aforementioned arm cannon, but due to Zebus's very lax laws on gun control and weapon regulations, Samus can also pick up hundreds of ballistic missiles, a freeze ray, a beam that can extend the path for destructive carnage, and a wave beam that teaches us how sine curves work and how they're apparently more dangerous than a straight line. If that wasn't enough for you, Samus can also utilize an infinite number of bombs, can curl up into a ball, because she can, and energize her suit so she can spin through the air, destroying nearly anything in sight. All things that United States citizens could have for home protection purposes if it weren't for those nasty bureaucrats at the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives Department. But for some reason, there does seem to be a legislative order preventing Samus from having both the Wave Beam and Ice Beam at the same time. So if you have one and one of the other, you need to backtrack to where you originally found it in order to change weapons. That may not sound too bad, or like a heavy inconvenience, until you realize that if you want to be able to find your way around Zebus, you're going to need to take a part-time job as a cartographer. In true libertarian fashion, Metroid doesn't give you anything in terms of a handout or even a hand up. When you start the game, you have 30 health, no missiles, and a massive series of caverns to explore, so identical looking, it makes the US Midwest look like Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. And if you game over, you have to restart with that same 30 health and no missiles. Finally, a game that teaches you to pull yourself up by your own high jump bootstraps. Now there is a password system, and even though it's not exactly the clunkiest password system to be seen in an NES game, it's still odd enough to where if you network several of these passwords together through their cartridges, you might be able to kick off the plot of war games. So there you go. Not even a battery back save to help you out, or Samus as a character for that matter. And what about Samus Aran? Why do we even have a female bounty hunter in this game? Some people on the far right might think this is some sort of affirmative action ploy. Did they just hire Samus instead of a more qualified bounty hunter just because she's a woman? Hardly. Samus got this job because of the free market. The market doesn't care if you're a man or a woman. It only cares about if you can offer the best service for the best price. And clearly, Samus can do that. I mean, after all, she would go on to appear in a number of other games, so she must be doing something right. But that's the power of the free market for you. Not only can it allow for economic prosperity, but under the right conditions, it can also help you bring down a roving band of alien space pirates bent on galactic domination through genetic modification and cloning of alien species. But as many of you know from my Emmy award-winning tenure in 2020, I'm also a consumer advocate, trying to protect your pocketbook from scammers, hoodlums, and ne'er-do-wells. And as we already discussed, this game doesn't do much for Metroids. Hell, it doesn't even do much in the way of space pirates. Look at these things in this game. Do any of these things look like space pirates? 
Call a bounty hunter? More like call the Orchid Man. And I know I'm not one to advocate for handouts, but holy Hugh Downs, this game could really use a map. That's not to say that this game is unplayable without one, because it certainly is. But you'd have a much better and easier time with it if you had a map to work with, or started drawing one by hand while you were playing. There's also a tremendous amount of enemies coming at you from very odd angles. There are little critters crawling on the ground, but your shots go over their heads. Then you have other monsters coming at you in wave motions, dropping down from above, or just coming out of pipes without a second to catch your breath. It's a relentless onslaught, which makes the title more difficult, but not in an organic way. More like if a bunch of senators and representatives were trying to bury your progress in a filibuster of killer aliens, just like during Woodrow Wilson's election cycle of 1916. So is Metroid worth playing today? Well, it was certainly groundbreaking in a lot of what it did in terms of an open world to explore and then explore even deeper after finding certain upgrades. But there are many other games out there that do the same thing and better. In particular, the Metroid sequels themselves improved upon this formula tremendously. So if you really want to experience where the Metroid saga started, this is definitely the place to go. But if you prefer to have fun playing this kind of a game, you'd have a better time with nearly any other game in the franchise. But is Metroid Libertarian? Yes. Yes, it most certainly is. Hey, I'm not an intergalactic bounty hunter, so what do I know? Give me a break.